Good afternoon, everyone. We are Monday, May 11th. Uh, I hope everybody had a good weekend. Premier has a very brief, brief update. Dr. Patterson quickly wants to say something, and then we'll go right into questions. Thank you. Government <laughs> Good afternoon. There are still no confirmed or probable case of COVID-19 in Nunavut. Today, the total number of people under investigation is 838. 285 are still under investigation, and 553 are no longer under investigation. Today is the start of National Nurse Week. Nurses are at the uh, front line every day at every checkup, emergency, and aftercare appointment. They are our first stop, our continuous care, our last check-in, and everything in between. Nurses are the spirit of the medical profession, and they are the healthcare heroes day in and day out. I cannot imagine the strain, stress, and dedication it takes to be in their position every day let alone during this pandemic. On behalf of the government of Nunavut, I want to acknowledge your work and let you know how truly appreciated we are, and there's one in every one of our communities. Thank you for your work during COVID-19, and thank you for everything. Uh, good afternoon. Um, I just want to clarify one thing from Friday's presser that the parks are closed and when I uh, answered a question I didn't mean to imply differently but it is also safe to go out on the land in household uh, as a household and camp fish hunt uh, whatever as long as social distancing and separation are maintained thank you Kentra School APTN National News. Uh, since it is uh, nursing week, Dr. Patterson, I'm wondering about critical supplies. I know early on during the COVID-19 process, you had expressed some concern about personal protective equipment. I'm wondering how are the health centers doing now in the communities for personal protective equipment? It's better than it was. It's not where we'd like it to be, but there is also now a national program where if we needed supplies in a hurry, we could access uh, a central cache and get supplies up to a community fairly, very quickly. 
Hanuini nach Saul tut, kiste ni Hanama gilang eta vosuli, kanata me pilere arta halenga tiki sei wir gun nach tun isuna kota ne khila me alununa ligno. Tiki tita gun nach ayar suti. Koi nemik for the interpretation. Uh my other question, I'm wondering uh some provinces and territories are loosening restrictions. Uh, Prince Edward Island in particular just changed their rules, allowing for very limited visiting and even hugs. Are we close to any sort of small movement on how people can relate with each other? There's still work going on to get reliable, sustainable diagnostic capacity available to all Nunavumu. When that happens, then we'll be easing restrictions. Rajni Sharma, Nunavut News. Dr. Pedersen, uh, last Friday you uh, mentioned that the gene expert machine in Callaway was validated. Could you just explain what that means? Rajni Sharma, Nunavut News. Luta Pedersen, tell me how you got it. Now how you saw the gene expert machine got there. You, now you got there. You got hung up. Then now how you took it hung up. When we, when any new uh, analyzer is being set up. The National Microbiology Lab through Public Health Agency of Canada provides a set of samples to be analyzed and then the lab that's doing that work sends the results back to the NML and if they're correct then the machine is considered uh, validated uh, or approved. But for most jurisdictions and we're one of them, we're going to continue to send even when we test with the gene expert, we're going to continue to send the samples south for uh, further assessment as well. Thank you for the clarification. And also you mentioned that um, Rankin Inlet, the machine there was being, um, it was in the process of being validated. So I just wanted to know what's the status with that testing machine? Uh, that's what I was referring to with, with Kent's question, is that the work to get that machine up and uh, uh, it is running, get it validated, is ongoing. When that's complete, then we'll be looking at easing restrictions. Jackie McKay, CBC News. Um, I just want to follow Raj's question there. Um, how long is there a timeline for when that machine in Rankin would be validated? Jackie McKay, CBC, Kuni Raj, Ape Kutting, Ela Gar, Lugohano Tigita, Nakanga Sinam, Misuna Kuta, Naruna Tavalega, so along over. Any day now, I'm hoping. Uh, it could be later today or tomorrow, maybe Wednesday, I'm not sure. Um, it's the time of year where people are starting to get things like seasonal colds. Um, people are wondering uh, how they're able to tell between having a regular cold or if they should be tested for COVID-19. Um, what, what do you suggest people do if they're feeling sick? There's a few options. There's the uh, hotline number, 975-8601. Um, There's the app that's linked through the Department of Health's website. And they, if they can't get through to either one, 
they can call their local health center and the staff there can also help them decide if they need to get tested or not. Thank you. My next question is for Minister Hicks. I'm wondering, um, has the GN finished negotiating the new weekly pay for Canadian North? Very close. Uh, officials were working all weekend actually on it up until last night and we were meeting on it earlier today. Uh, so we're very near uh, coming to an agreement. Thank you. I'm wondering if that, um, that price you're negotiating is um, a direct subsidy to the airline or are you buying empty seats um, from the airline? Kind of a bit of both, I guess, in some ways, Jackie. We are buying the seats that we would historically use. Uh, so that any medical travel or any duty travel that would have to occur during this period, we've basically pre-bought those seats already. So the amount that we are pro providing to the airlines uh, would would that would be it. We wouldn't have to purchase seats in addition to that. That being said, uh, we're nowhere near using the seats that we're purchasing. That's why I said there's a large portion of it is also a subsidy. Thank you. Megan Dooling, Nunatsiak News. Um, I'm wondering, the federal government announced today federal funding for larger companies. I'm wondering if your government is involved in knowing anything about that money and if that would be separate from federal funding for Northern Airlines. Megan Dooling, Nunatsiak, Government of Hakunaluna, Sakama, Tatamakunu, Anga, Utah, Nasan, Namina, Hatu, and Ika, Utah, Nangata. Thanks for the question, Megan. From what I understand, uh, I haven't had a chance to brief, uh, get briefed or brief myself on, on much of the details, but I believe it was intended to large businesses. I think it was $300 million uh, or more in revenue and certain other conditions. So I haven't had a chance to look into it or not. That being said, there are a number of federal programs that have been announced already, such as the wage, wage subsidy and, and different programs that the airlines uh, do have access to. And I'm wondering about summer infrastructure projects, uh, territorial infrastructure projects like the deep sea ports in Akalawit and then the long term elders residence in Rankin and in Akalawit. I know some of those were going to be under construction this summer and I understand that the municipalities and hamlets do get to approve whether or not those will go ahead and then Dr. Patterson will have to have the final parameter but I'm wondering if you could talk about 
right now if it looks like any of those will be stalled right now just because you have to put a lot of work in motion to get them to actually be working in the summertime. Oh, yeah, I'm going to go to UT. I'm going to go to the 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 UT. Uh, that there was contact made with the communities uh, to make sure that they were comfortable with construction projects moving forward, obviously, and make sure that uh, through the work with Dr. Patterson's office that uh, they could alleviate concerns. Uh, I don't believe all the communities have responded, but the majority of them have. Uh, as far as prioritizing the construction projects, making sure that uh, they're comfortable with the uh, the process that the construction workers would be entering their community and what they would be doing once they're there. Uh, so the work is still progressing in that, but we haven't had any communities to date uh, refuse any any of the work. Lota Patterson, Pillar Hatalunitako, Isoma, Lutu, Hunagit, Tiki Hattara Yartilugi, Sanagia Tortut, and Malonalia, Sibul Jauga, Hamanga, Akaria, Napango, Yunali, Ninaluna, Toga, Harsuni, Sulitamana Pillarang of Lea Yorkis, and Nurali, Lunatica Sakis, Malak Tugalo, Takalo, Hanut sang it to in Napiga, Bill Patasana Yoga, Lartoni Aoya, Nunangini. Kent Driscoll, APTN National News. Uh, Minister Hicks, we, had, we talked about this, I think it was a month ago, it might even be longer. Uh, new small businesses are suffering disproportionately under COVID-19 due to a lot of reasons. But I'm wondering, has there been any provisions put in to try and give new Nuvu companies first crack at COVID-19 related contracts? Kent Driscoll, APTN, Minister Hicks, and I love it, you take a look at Nuna Gumi, Mickey Uta on her soy, and I'm many heart to you at Surna to Kung at a Nova Joan on nineteen, Pitjutigi Lugu, Nuna Gumi, Ilana Luna Sisma Visi, Tamako, Mickey Uta on her say, contract me, Pitita Nahatarna, Hasorna Mangata. Thanks, Kent. Uh, could you maybe just clarify the very end, just like COVID 19 related uh, contracts? Any maybe? sort of any sort of contract related to the COVID 19 response. If you're buying something, are you going through a local company, for example? Tamana Nova Jan, Napi Jutigil Lugu, no Pid Nuna Lidni Tamanila, Nuna Vumi, Solo Nuvera Haro Chitako, Sibul Jauka Sora Tamaka. Thanks, thanks for clarifying that, Kent. Uh, obviously, whenever uh, government procurement, we try and go through the procurement process, and, and in circumstances like this, sometimes we have to make very snap decisions. Uh, that being said, there hasn't been, uh, to my knowledge, many available. Uh, opportunities to to purchase services or, or materials and when we do obviously we would want to do it locally uh, to make sure that uh, not only are we supporting the business but it would expedite the whatever the contract is asking for if the if the materials or, or services are available locally that would be our first priority we still do have our standing offer uh, list through through the normal procurement process so those companies are obviously would be first to be contacted I'm also wondering, uh, in your health minister role, I'm wondering about medical travel. Uh, people who had non-urgent or elective medical travel planned that have now had it pushed back. 
Uh, what I'm wondering is, do you have any idea how many of those cases there would be, and how are you planning for what's going to be a backlog in the system when we're finally sending people back down south for elective things? <coughs> No cartita or similar on a tahachi, what a maco, a camagia, we are to relate, Nalunangit, Taco, King of Simalangata, Halunano, Camagia, Hattare, Torelli, so Lupila Togia to Hattarelli, Pimmaru Langitum. Thanks for the question, Kent. I think it's a complicated one to answer in a way that, you know, like Ontario, as an example, has eased some of their uh, non elective surgeries or elective surgeries to, to be a little bit more open. And all those in the jurisdictions that we partner with are going to have their own backlogs in addition to, to our medical needs. So that's where the complexity of the prioritization of what type of services that you do want to make sure that we're entailing. I know it did come up with Dr. Patterson this morning uh, where we'll, be, well, he'll have to communicate with Dr. DeVette and, and work with uh, not just the prioritization of, of making sure that uh, our patients are being seen uh, proactively, but it also working with the, our partner jurisdictions to make sure that their capacity is, is available to take on their backlog as well as our backlog. If that answers the question. Tana kiuka saare nga nalunato sulu Ontario mi hasutit si valle langa tan malita uya talo tuni takwalo pila pimari ulo angit tuni pila tayo hatareli kamagi yao valle alas sutik. Takwata <laughs> Uh, Jack in the case, CBC News. Um, last week we talked about three special warrants um, by the Financial Management Board. Can you clarify what exactly these three special warrants are? Jack in the CBC Kunik Business Mauna to in Narkina, Yali Rajiku, Aula Chino Mokati Maying in Nanga Taos, Mayu Kisula Tamo Mangata Tako, Pingasu, Naluna Yarun Naki. Thanks, Jackie. Basically, the, the airline supports that we provided up until now that we're renegotiating now, as well as the cost for the isolation hubs. Hojanami, Takuno, Hangata Yuli, Noturanga Lautu, Malo Taka, Yero Tigiva, Yavamana, Yor, and Malo Pilo, to Mitaku, and Atoyo, maybe no two view, we are Hatala, to no Achilio, to Hatara, and Taima, Atilio, and Halato. That's all that's covered in those three warrants? Go to a pingasu. Up to now. Ulumi Moe. How much money has the GM put aside for those warrants? After the question on Friday, I should have looked up and reminded myself of the number. Unfortunately, Jackie, I didn't. I'd have to go back and go over the numbers again. Seems like so long ago, and I've got a lot of numbers flying through my head right now. Thank you. <laughs> 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 Sharma, New Novet News. Minister Hicks, I don't know if you'll be able to answer this question. I don't know who it's for, but I'm really curious to know how many people have lost their jobs in the territory due to COVID-19? Rasni Sharma Nunova Kudni Minister Hicks and Nakia Kaku could not tang at an over John of nineteen Pijotigilu Hachi, the Kanaya Mini and Naisima Vatamani Nunavumi. That's a good question, actually, Raj. I, I'm not aware of any specific numbers on, the, on even how uh, the reporting of that would be. Uh, some of it would be uh, compensated through employment insurance. Obviously, the emergency relief benefit. Would, would cover some people. I know uh, some of the daycares were laying off staff. Uh, I'm hoping that some of them have also taken advantage of the wage subsidy program. Um, 
Uh, that's a, a very good question. I, I don't think in, in, you know, obviously in the hospitality industry, there are some businesses have chose to retain their staff. Some have chosen the layoff route. So it'd be, uh, again, it would be a, a not even an educated guess if I were to provide any type of number or percentage. Kan <laughs> So, Lutaka Tungana did senior mobility rally in the river weed. Ilang Ekanayak Timin, Ekanayak the Hain Narsimayut, Ilang in Ekanayak Timin in Nukarti Chiga Hassimayut. Nalau Sato in Narayara Matana, Kilgunangitara. Thank you.